Okay, salam alaikum, Mishraam. Can you hear me? Salam, yes. Okay, good. Uh, welcome back. I uh, hope you had a, an enjoyable weekend. Um, I would like to start the lecture by announcing uh, the followings. Well, today we are going to start taking the attendance. I hope you check the message on the blackboard. So in about 10 minutes, I'm going to ask you to uh, switch on your webcams and then we will take that in this one by one. Uh, also, uh, I would like to remind you that we will have a quiz on Tuesday. So the details about how the quiz is going to be conducted on the blackboard will be described. But there is a good chance, I'm not saying that it is for sure, but there is a good chance that I may ask you to uh, select this, the answers by multiple choices and by the end of the quiz to upload the solution. Okay, so also make sure you are ready to do that. If it is, um, if it is a scanner, make sure the scanner is connected, is you know how to take the file, drop it in the, black, in the blackboard. If it is your uh, phone, also try to learn how to get those scans from your phone all the way to the blackboard. Maybe you will need to take them from the phone to the computer, from the computer to the blackboard. This is a very safe way. I'm gonna leave this to you, okay? Just, I wanna make sure that you are ready. Yes. Uh, uh, doctor, so, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, so it will be multiple choice or uh, written? Most, most li yeah, most likely. It, it's definitely a, a, a written exam, a written quiz. The question is, would I ask you to upload the solution or only um, solve it? It's not in the sense multiple choices because you didn't need to solve, uh, is it conceptual or not? No, uh, but definitely I will probably ask you to upload your solution in the Blackboard, okay? Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, so with no further delay, uh, let me start talking about the, where we stopped last time. We talked about normal stresses, or in general, uh, we talked about stresses. So uh, we said that the definition of the stress is that it's a measure of the internal forces acting within a deformable body. I told you that stress is um, a field and by uh, a field, it is always um, a surface, kind of. And in order to know its value at a certain cross-section, you have to determine a point. And then from that point, you can know what is the stress. The unit of stress is very simple. It's uh, a unit of force over a unit of area, which is Newton per meter square and uh, that is the Pascal. Also, uh, we, we discussed this, I'm not gonna talk about it again. So if we talk about different stresses, interestingly, Ya Akhwan, interestingly, there are only two types of stresses. And it is very fancy and interesting, why? Because what we are claiming here in mechanics of material is that any shape, even if you take, Ya Khwan, even if you take um, the, let's say, a cheese, and then you start deforming the cheese the way you want, or you take a dough, a dough, يعني شباب العجينة, and you do all kind of deformation on it. In principle, we are assuming that with all of the different complex shape that you get, there are only two types of stresses. And indeed, there are two types of strains and that represent the whole mechanics here, which is normal or shear. The combination of both normal and shear makes all of these wonderful 
deformations that we can experience in our life. Now, we call normal stress as the stress, which is in a simple way. The stress field acts normal to a given place. This is the key word, a stress field, and then it's act normal to a given plane, any plane. So if, for example, we have the famous cube that we always draw in mechanics of material, if we apply a stress, which is represented by arrow here, which is not a vector as we agree, on this face, then this is shear. Why? Because that stress is acting parallel to the surface. But if I go to another plane and I apply a perpendicular stress, normal to it, then this is a normal stress. It's very simple. Usually, if you want to recognize normal stresses, they in tensile, for example, if you talk about axial load, axial load means what does axial mean? It means the following, Ya Juan. Usually, usually, if we have um, a shape, is it a rod, is it a beam, it doesn't matter, and then you have a dimension here, like this. One dimension is very long compared to the others. This is called the axial. I think I messed up here, so let me clean this up. This is called the axial direction, which is along the axis, which has a longer dimension. So if you apply an axial load like that, you can either make this one longer, or you can apply compression and make it shorter. Longer means you are creating a normal stresses that produce tensile stress. And then the compression will produce compressive stress. Both of them, stress, tensile compression, are acting along the, the, the normal direction. This is an example about tension. As you see, we are putting the force as one vector over here, whether it is tension or compression, but we are representing the stress as a field of many, many little forces. Those are little, little tiny forces acting over the entire cross section. And they are, their sense, their arrowhead is pointing into the di in the direction which is similar to the force. We need to get familiar, Ya Akhwan, with this concept of a cube. Why? Uh, it is a very long story. Maybe, I don't know, one day I can talk about it, which I don't think so because we have a very crowded schedule in terms of the syllabus. But what do we do? We usually represent an infinitesimal, small, little, tiny element of the material, very little, which is if we think about a specimen like the one you fracture in material science lab, this cube uh, in the surface is going to be a very little tiny dot. Okay, this is our way to say that the limit as the volume goes to zero, approaches zero. It doesn't go to zero, it approaches zero. So in here, the interesting part about stress is this when you apply one load which is like p over here that generates stress if you decide that this is x direction this is y then this is sigma y we call it sigma y in reality it's supposed to be sigma y y but for short we make it sigma y and we are going to talk about what does it mean to be sigma y y does it mean that i have can i have sigma y x can I have sigma xx? Can I have sigma zz? We'll talk about that later. But for now, that's all. What happened to the x direction? Nothing. There is nothing in the x direction. 
what happened to the z direction there is nothing in the z direction this is not like stress i mean this is not like strain strain is a little bit more complex because when you apply strain in one direction there are other strains that will happen in another direction and possibly this is a good answer uh, to my question earlier question why are we only dealing with stress because in stress if you have a uniaxial state you will only have uh, uh, um, um, a uniaxial state if you have a biaxial like for example you apply stress in sigma y and sigma z you will have two dimensional state if you have three three that's it a strain in is different you might have a three coming from one and i don't want to confuse you with that just forget it okay now what do we want to talk about is that there is another way to generate normal stress it's very strange that other way is by bending that's very really really funny huh ya shabab and it is very very important why because what are we saying here is that into tafagna ahna no if i apply a normal load f or p i will get a normal stress that's what i'm going to get now interestingly if you look at the cross section when you bend a beam like this when you look at the cross section over here what do you see you see normal ya shabab insu mawdu anu hada stress mu mustaqim yani mu mu it's not constant insu al mawdu ma yafriq ana ma qaad atkallam an al value of the stress i'm talking about the distribution of the stress in here the distribution is constant this value for example is 100 megapascal and it is constant well, bending will create normal stress which is uniform but it's not constant uniform ايش معناها يا شباب يعني مو اذا كان الكروس سكشن هذا هو الكروس سكشن this is non uniform stress لو stress كان فوضى كذا values حقتها doesn't have a significant or doesn't have a specific mathematical description random this is not what we are talking about we're talking about a uniform distribution which is tension in the top compression in the bottom and vice versa this type of stress is like here constant here is a first order equation كانك انت قاعد تقول y equals to ax plus b بينما هنا y equals to a constant but that does not deny that this is a normal stress ليه لانه الاسهم هذه are acting perpendicular to the to the cross section and this is the definition of a normal stress it is normal to the cross section do you understand يا شباب okay i will now stop um uh, I will stop the sharing in here and I will turn on my other uh, screen and I would like you to turn on your shabab your uh, your webcam okay so quickly as you as you see your name coming ahead okay okay So Abu Saleh Faisal are you here Abu Shal Faisal yes Abu ايش Abu, Abu Shal yeah yeah حياك الله يا فيصل الله يحييك Abu Turki no Abu Taki Yusuf here where are you here uh, are you are you switching on your webcam ya yeah. Okay Yusuf. okay Yusuf i see you okay good ابو uh, خميس حمد يس دكتور وير ار يو؟ 
Yes, okay. Those who I called their name, they can switch off the, the, the cam, okay, Shabam? Okay, Abu Khamis. Tayyib, Gahtani Ali? Gahtani? Not here. Yusuf, 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 no, Yusuf, Yusuf. Okay. Uh, Majid? Yes. Abba? Okay. Okay, Majid. Uh, Ali? Hussein? Yes, Majid, yes. Okay, good. Uh, Muhammad? Yes. Green. Okay. And uh, Hassan. Yes. Al Aish. Al Aish. Aish. Yeah. Where are you? I'm here. I cannot see you. No, I don't know. I opened the camera. Just wait a sec. Okay, I see you now. Okay, good. Uh, Mubarak? Yes. Mubarak, how are Mubarak? Ahmed? Uh, yes, sir. Al-Ghazari. Okay, good. Uh, Ali? Haddi? Ali? Oh, Okay, good. Al Hajj. Hajj, yes. Matab? No, Ma. Majib? Majib. Majib. Okay. Sultan, Harvey. Majib, Sultan. Hayakala, Sultan. Abdullah? Yes. Where are you, ya? Where are you, Abdullah? Can you talk? Yes. Hijab. Okay, good. Yes. Sultan? Sultan? Yes. Where are you, Sultan? Yes. Can't you see me? Sul no. Can you talk? Yes, I can talk. Uh, I opened the camera. And uh, I can see Faris here. I don't see uh, Sultan Al Hoshan. Yes. Sultan. I still don't see you. Okay, yeah, there. I, I got you. Faris? Yes. Okay. Uh, Abdurrahman? Nizha? Yes, yes. Khalid? Tavi? Mojo, Doctor. Okay, I see you. Abdullah Al Aufi. Okay, I see. You. I see. Uh, Faris Al Ghatani. Okay, Faris. Sabit. Yes, Dixon. Ali. Ram uh, Ramadan. Yes, Dixon. Okay, good. Uh, Hashim. Yes, doctor. Okay, Sandra. Majid? Yes, doctor. Majid, where are you? Here. Okay, I see you. Uh, Muhammad Shikori? Okay. Ahmed, Sultan, Sultan? Here. Here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see you. Mishad? Liami, okay, good. Walid? Yes. Walid, okay. Muhammad? Yes, looks the Barashi. Okay. Abdullah? Abdullah? Sufiani? Are you here, yeah, Sufiani? Ahmed? Some... Oh, good. Okay, good. All right. Let's go back to business. This took too long.
Okay, you may you may stop your webcam again. Uh, there is no need for it. Can you see now the screen? No, not yet. Not yet. Yes, now yes. I think it's a little bit slow. Okay. So, um, we agreed that, uh, that the bending create normal stress. Now, if, yes, Shabab, in mathematics, this very simple argument that if there is a value, a function, which has a value that is positive, and then somewhere else, there's a value that is negative, it must pass through zero. My theory, if you have um, x and y, and the value of the function is positive somewhere and negative somewhere, it has to have a value where either the, the x here is equals to zero, or if you look at it from the y-axis, the y here is equals to, uh, sorry, the y here equals to zero, and here the x is equals to zero. So the same goes with the stress. In bending, there is a line, depending on how the bending is happening, there will be a line which we call the neutral axis. Or we call it the neutral surface because indeed it is a surface. The whole thing here, if you draw it, it's actually a three-dimensional cross-section. And this line is extended to be a surface within the material from the inside. In that surface, the stress is zero. There is no stress. Its value is right here, and it is equals to zero. Do you see it? This is very important. Now, the interesting part is the following. Can we add similar stresses? Well, I, if you say, can we add similar, I will tell you yes. But if you say, can we add stresses? I tell you, okay, wait a second. Uh, which stresses we're talking here? Uh, because you can look at normal stresses uh, as, uh, you know, similar. They are the same animal, same species. They live together. They coordinate together. For example, if you have a cross-section which is subjected to a force. This normal distribution that you see right here is coming because there is a normal force F applied to it. And the same, the same cross-section, yeah, Shabab? Uh, yeah, the same cross-section over here can be subjected to a bending loading which cause compression in the top, tension in the bottom. Now, can you add them? Definitely. So if you add them, you add them one by one. So for example, you go and you look at this arrow. Sorry, uh, I mean this. And you say this arrow has a value of 10 megapascal. While this arrow has a value of minus 5 megapascal. So 10 plus minus 5 equals to plus 5. So the result here is that this one is 5 megapascal. Do you see that? Then if we go to the one below it, this is still 10, but this one maybe now it is minus 2. So I will end up, sorry, uh, I will end up with a stress over there, which is equal to eight. So in the bottom, I have 10, and this one now become positive, minus five, become positive, which is a plus five. So 10 plus five is 15, and I will get here 15. One to one addition. Do you see that, Yahuan? As far as, 
they are normal stresses. Do you get this? يعني باختصار يا أخوان إذا عندي cross section like this, okay, and then I apply tension to it. At the same time, I apply bending to it, and then maybe maybe I apply compression to it three times. So this will produce normal stress like this. This will produce compression in here and tension in here. This will produce compression. This one will produce tension. I can add them all one by one. One to one. I go to one point, I add it. I add a point here with a point here with a point here. Tension, bending, compression. And then I go to the next point and the next point and the next point. Very simple. Now, with respect to the bending, ya Juan, we are, I'm not going to talk a lot about uh, how did we derive the equation and so on. But with respect to bending, ya Juan, it's the famous equation, sigma equals to mc over r. This equation, which governs the stress generated due to the application of bending moment. Okay? This equation came through several assumptions. Interestingly, if you look at these assumptions, it goes, whoa, this is too much. For example, in the the beam is subjected to pure bending. There is no shear forces, no torsion, and so on. The material is isotropic. The material obey Hooke's law. The beam initially straight with the cross section that is constant through the beam. Hit the cross section due to bending might deform, might change. It may not remain the same cross section. But if you apply the bending within the design regime, design regime is that the bending is not going to be observed by hand, by, by eyes. The bending deformation or the bending stresses are mostly elastic, very little. You can barely see the curvature. And even if you, if you measure the curvature, it will be very, 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 very small. So, a lot of assumptions. But interestingly, as much as those assumptions are hard sometimes to satisfy, However, this equation seems to work very well. It will give you a very, very accurate approximation of any stress generated due to the application of some bending moment on a beam. Okay? So, what are we going to do? We're going to set some rules. Okay? The first thing is very important. Really, really. It will... It will, it will be the reason why your answer can be right or wrong, although your calculations are relatively accurate, but you may get a wrong answer. So how does this happen? أول حاجة يا أخوان إن إحنا راح نتفق على a coordinate system. We call it right-handed coordinate system, which is a Cartesian coordinate, okay? So what does right-handed coordinate system mean? It means the following. If I have a three-dimensional coordinate, then I will set the rule for multiplying the unit vector for each axis to be positive. Do you remember this drawing from orientation, from Math 101? Multi, you know, cross product of unit vectors. If you, if you multiply i by j, you get positive k. If you multiply j by k, you get positive i, and so on. So, what are we going to do? This is, we are going to do a right-handed coordinate system in the sense that if this is x, okay, and this is y, this is i, and this is j. So, you use your hand, right hand rule to say that if I cross I by J, which is the same rotation as here, my thumb, 
الصبع يا شباب الابهام يور ثم ويل بوينت تورد ذيس دايركشن سو ذيس دايركشن شود بي زد That's a right-handed coordinate system. Why? Because we use the right-hand rule to cross the I by J and then point the thumb towards Z. That's number one. Number two, you will notice in the book, in many situations, that most of the time, I'm not going to say Nuhadi Ghasub, but most of the time, we try to set the coordinate system such that sigma x is pointing outward the surface. ليه؟ لان احنا تعودنا نسمي ستريس هذا اللي generated من هنا نسميه سيجما x. اذا سميناه سيجما x معناها انه it is pointing toward the x direction. So I need to put the x which is normal to that surface. Now على طول يا اخوان بس انا اسمي هذا x اعرف انه اللي بيربنديكولر عليه واي اند ذن ذا اوت وورد ويتش از ذا كروس برودكت ويل بي ذا ذس از ذا دايركشن سو اف اي لوك ان 3 دي سيرفيس اوف ذا كروس اكشن ذا اكس از جوينج تو بي هير واي از جوينج تو بي هير اند زد از جوينج تو بي ذير كلير يا اخوان انا لارثين از ذات We will call the sigma m here represent the maximum stress generated due to bending, which is usually at the surface. Why? Because the equation sigma equals to mc over i, while m is the moment that we apply, and i is the moment of inertia, which is a property of the cross action, which we will talk about. Okay? The c is the distance from the neutral axis to where to the point now ana shabab ma'lish abghakum tintabhu ala shaghla sometimes يقول لك انا باسمي هذه c هي هنا الفاليو هذه okay في الحقيقه المعادله هي سيجما equals to m y divided by i ليه خلوني يا اخوان ذس از ذس از فيري امبورتنت وذ بندنج ليت مي اكسبلين ذس فيري ويل اف اي ستي اي ونت تو فايند ذا ستريس ويتش از كامينج فروم بندنج اوكي ذس از ناو سيجما اكس سيجما اكس از ايكوال تو ا مومنت اوكي دو يو نو وات از ذا دايركشن اوف ذس مومنت لوك ات ذس And tell me, if this is x, this is y, and this is z. So this one is x, this one is y, and this one is z. What is the moment that will generate a stress acting in the normal direction toward x? What is this moment? Uh, z positive. Mz. Positive, correct. So this is M Z. طيب إذا أنا بأحسب stress either here or there, this distance. بقض النظر هذا نسمي C1 وهذا نسمي C2 لأنهم مختلفين في الجراف هذا. But in general, what is this dimension? It's Y. So the equation should be M Z. And then y divided by i. Do you get this? Now i also have its definition. It has two indices: i x x, i y y, i z z. So I am not. Yes, to call it. Tafsir, ya Faris. Why is it m z? أنا أعلمك. That's a very good question. You better ask this question now than after two months. The only way. شوف إحنا البندنج ترى الشعور هو أفضل طريقة يعني والإحساس هو أفضل طريقة إنك تفهم كيف how does it work. 
if you think about it, when you apply a bending moment like this, you rotate your ha right hand in the same direction of the moment. Where is the thumb going to point to? Ya Faris. Uh, to the positive Z. To the positive Z. صح ولا لا؟ طيب. أنت الآن أبقاك تشوف الـ cross section هاي. You just focus on this cross section. إيش تلاحظ؟ تلاحظ أن المومنت كأن هي قاعدة تضغط على السكشن من هنا وقاعدة تعمل له تنشن من هنا، صح ولا لا؟ كأن هي قاعدة تسحب من تحت وتضغط من فوق. خلاص أنا الآن سويت الأروز هذه، أرو طالعة بالاتجاه هذا وفي أروز طالعة بالاتجاه هذا. صح ولا لا؟ فإذا أنا اخترت إنه هذا هو الإكس صح؟ معناها إنه هذا هو الواي وهذا هو الزد إذا هذه stresses are sigma x how did I how did I generate them by applying m z صحيح نعم makes sense right yes okay good now let's talk about the i which is the moment of inertia شوفوا يا أخوان ال ال i هو geometrical فاكتور نفس نفس الاريا الفرق انه انا شخصيا I always think of it like uh, if you have higher power you are stronger right so while area is measured in meter square moment of inertia is a little bit more complex it's actually measured in meter to the power four and Usually, moment of inertia is associated with bending. It is the geometrical factor that describes how bending acts. Let me tell you how. Very interestingly, okay? If you look at two different cross-sections, okay? Two different cross-sections. And as we said, we are going to call this one X. We are going to call this one Y. And this is Z. This is a positive right-handed coordinate system. Why? Because if you use the right-hand rule and you multiply Y, X by Y, you get positive Z. If you multiply Y by Z, you get a positive X and so on. Ali, you need anything? Okay. Now, if you look here, let's ask you a question. Very simple question. And I think usually this is a simple question. If I asked you and asked you, where is the rule and where is the rule of the cross-section? Let's make it clear so that you can answer it in a simple way, okay? خلونا نسمي هذا A وهذا أو تدرون أخاف أسميه B وتقولون خلاص B هو البيس وانتهينا صح؟ So uh, let me draw the cross section again and call this dimension uh, N this dimension M And what else? This dimension is a Q. Now you are you are confused. So uh, so let's um, let's put this one on X, Y, and Z. Now let me make it very simple for you. Okay, if I apply a moment over Z. Which is MZ. صح ولا لا؟ صحيح. Okay. Well, and أنا جيت قلت لكم هذه اللي باللون الأصفر هي MZ. صح؟ وأنا أبقى أحسب طبعا واضح إنه شو اللي صار؟ يصير عندي هنا tension. 
صح؟ يصير عندي هنا كومبريشن صح؟ حسب اتجاه الارو الارو حق المومنت قاعد يسحب الماتيريال من تحت يشدها ويضغطها من فوق فخلونا نفترض قلت لكم انا ابي احسب ستريس هنا هنا فوق فوق وهذا هو واي ايكوالز تو سي الواي از ا دايمنشن ايكوالز تو سي فاحنا جينا وقلنا سيجما اكس ايكوالز تو ام زد ام زد طبعا بوزيتيف صح ولا لا؟ الواي يا شباب السي بوزيتيف ولا نيجاتيف؟ بوزيتيف دكتور اتس بوزيتيف السهم طالع فوق ابوت ذا لا لا اتس اتس نوت ابوت ذات يا اي فورجت يور نيم اي دين اتس ابوت ذا دايمنشن اتس سيلف اي ام ميجرنج ات فروم ذا زيرو ابورد ابورد از بوزيتيف واي سو I have a positive y which is equals to c divided by now بقى المومنت اوف انيرشيا من السهل جدا ان انتم تذكروا بانه ال المومنت اوف انيرشيا فوق احد احد يذكرني بالمعادله وات از ات يا شباب 1 over 12 اها اي بي اي بي كيوب طيب اذا انا سالتك وقلت لك البيس والهايت which one of them ما ابغى اي وبي اي انا اقدر احط البي على اكس والزد على بي والبي على ام واعفس الدنيا أنا أبغى أعرف بيس وهايت. وات إز ذا بيس؟ وات إز ذا؟ ويتش ون أوف ذيم إز كيو؟ الكيو. ذا ون ذات ذا فورس إز نورمال تو. لا أنا بسألكم سؤال اتركوا الدياجرام يا شباب المعادلة أنتم دائما ما عرفتوا المعادلة على حقيقتها هذا المشكلة. المعادلة هي في الحقيقة 1 over 12 مضروبة في البيس مضروبة في الهايت كيوب الهايت هو اللي يرفع إلى أس ثلاثة The cube goes to the height Now الهايت هل هو Q هل هو M هل هو N That's something else بس the real equation هي 1 over 12 base by height cube Now let's go to the next challenge In this, where is the height? Where is the base? The base is the neutral uh, axis. Con. يعني علمني إياها. Is it n, m, or q? Q q. It's the height. The base is the n. البيس هي ان اوكي سو يو ار سينج ذات اي از ايكوال تو 1 اوفر 12 مضروبه في البيس اللي هي وات الان ان اوكي دكتور واتس ذا ديفرنس بين ام اند كيو اتس ذا سيم بوينتنج ات ذا سيم ذات از ذا سيم اي ميد ا ميستيك اوفر هير Yes, Dexter, Q and N are the same. Should be Q yeah, and the yeah. other. One should uh, be in the X direction. Yes, yes, yes. It's fine. Uh, we don't need... Um, let's say we... Let me erase this one. We don't need it. Okay. Okay. Now. So, N here base. And then what will be the the the... The height is going to be m yeah. cube. Is that what you are saying? Yes. Yes. Is not over two. Uh, now, okay, okay, Shabab, don't worry about it. I am not talking about the la uh, mu over two. I'm not talking about c. I'm talking about the cross section. Now, let me tell you. 
how are we going to deal with the moment of inertia? أنا أجي يا أخوان أشوف المومنت إذا المومنت عملت لي tension here compression here then somewhere somewhere يا شباب along this line there will be a neutral axis صح ولا لا؟ ليه؟ لأنه الفاليو حتكون maximum here في stress It will go to zero, and then it will become like this. Now, when you determine the line of the neutral axis, the dimension along that line is the base, which is here, N, which is the thickness. Now, the height will be perpendicular to the line of the neutral axis. عشان كذا عشان كذا يا اخوان let's flip your mind okay let's flip your mind now if we do this this one is n again this one is m again this is the x axis This is the y-axis and this is the z-axis. If I apply a moment like this, now this moment is m y. m y. But now look, look, look what will happen. This part will be under tension. And this part will be under compression. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Bye. Where is the neutral axis? Uh, along y axis. Yes. Along okay. here, yes. Somewhere here, there will be a neutral axis. فأم صار إيش صار هو البيس عشان كذا لاحظوا يا أخوان this equation is sigma x the stress is going to x but I did it using m y and then now look what is the height the height is along the z direction so I have a z over here and then what do I have I have a moment of inertia, okay, which is measured, measured, this moment of inertia measured as 1 over 12. The base is what? Is M. Is M. M. And, N. N. and then the height is what? N. Is N. Q. 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 Did you get this, Ya Juan? Uh, yes. So the, uh, yes. The, ba yes. the base always barrel to the neutral axis. Yes. Always. Yes. Always. So, doctor, basically, the base and the height uh, is determined by the axis. Definitely. Whenever you determine the neutral axis, okay, you will know where is the base, where is the height. Now, let me give you this idea quickly. We have one minute. Moment of inertia, if you do it that way, Go ahead at home, please, and think about this idea. If you have a ruler, ya akhwan, a ruler, al mustara, shaklaha kida, sah? Takriba. Usaira tawila. Is that right? Is that right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, what I want you to just think of the ruler as a rectangle. Oh, if you're not going to and you really found a rectangular ruler. The question is, why, why, why? Based on this argument, why is it easy to bend the ruler in this direction? And probably, probably, there is no living human being that can bend it along this direction. 
maybe it's related to sea it's related to the moment of inertia yes it is. The, the base and the height are different the base will tie will height are different in one of them the base is too lit the, the height is a small when you cube it you have a small number yes. in the other one the height is a huge and when you cube it it become even bigger and if you relate that to the deformation it will tell you the equation that you need a huge stress to cause the deformation compared to a little stress even a kid ya shabab tufil bilimkan inu yamal bending along this line but there is nobody and i dare you you'll find anybody i'm not talking about, about avengers ya khwan okay talking about real thing not movies Nobody will be able to bend the ruler in this direction. This is very important concept in design. That's why in buildings, ya khwan, all columns up in the ceiling are oriented this way. Because it can take a huge load without bending significantly. You flip them, the whole building will collapse. Okay, shabab, this is enough. Okay? Thank you so much. Be ready for the quiz. Okay, Shabab. Doctor.